27-year-old Anand, an avid marathon runner, suddenly felt an unusual chest pain during one of his regular morning runs. Thinking it was just fatigue, he brushed it off. But over the next few days, he experienced shortness of breath, mild fever, and even fainting spells. A visit to the local clinic quickly escalated to an emergency referral and a diagnosis of fulminant myocarditis. So, buckle up and let's embark on this enlightening journey together and find out how to manage when such a patient comes to your ICU. And if you find value in our content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more deep dives into critical care medicine topics. Acute myocarditis primarily affects adolescents and young adults. 75% of acute myocarditis patients experience chest pain with preserved LV ejection fraction and usually have a benign course. 25% of these patients might face complications like LV systolic dysfunction, ventricular arrhythmias, or acute heart failure. 3 to 9% of patients either arrive at the hospital in cardiogenic shock or develop it within 48 hours, which is referred to as fulminant myocarditis, FM. Data from three multi-center registries, which included 92% histologically proven cases, showed that the median age for FM presentation in adults is between 42 to 54 years, with a male prevalence of 50 to 60%. Mortality or the need for heart transplantation in FM was estimated to be 28 to 29% within 60 to 90 days according to two independent registries. Around 48% faced death or heart transplantation seven years post-hospitalization. The Change Pump 2 study found mortality, heart transplantation, or long-term LVAD implantation rates of 34% at 90 days and 43% at 6 years. Factors linked to a poorer long-term prognosis included giant cell myocarditis compared to lymphocytic myocarditis with a hazard ratio, hazard ratio, of 3.03. QRS interval exceeding 120 milliseconds, hazard ratio 1.74. Need for a temporary mechanical circulatory support device other than IABP, hazard ratio 3.27. Determinants of outcomes at 90 days in the Change Pump 2 study included requirement for venoarterial extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, ventricular arrhythmias upon admission, not undergoing an endomyocardial biopsy, in the Japanese FM registry, factors linked to death or HTX at 90 days were older age, non-sinus rhythm, LVEF below 40% upon admission, ventricular arrhythmias on the first day, the in-hospital mortality rate for 850 patients with suspected FM needing VAE CMO was 34.9% as per the ELSO registry. Clinical presentation of myocarditis Acute myocarditis is a potential cause of cardiogenic shock. Symptoms include dyspnea in 74 to 86 percent of cases, chest pain in 32 percent, syncope in 18 percent, fever in 60 to 67 percent, gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, or abdominal pain in 29 to 38 percent. About 94 percent of cases show abnormal EKG results. Advanced atrioventricular block might necessitate a temporary pacemaker and indicate specific etiologies like cardiac sarcoidosis, GCM, Lyme carditis, and ICI-associated myocarditis. Echocardiography may reveal severe LV and right ventricular systolic impairment with almost normal ventricular dimensions. Other findings can be pericardial effusion and intraventricular thrombi. Biomarkers like high-sensitivity troponins and nt proBNP are elevated in nearly all FM patients. Conditions that can resemble myocarditis include acute coronary syndrome, previously unknown idiopathic cardiomyopathy with acute HF, primary ventricular arrhythmias leading to acute LV systolic dysfunction, septic cardiomyopathy, intoxication, like in cocaine, Takotsubo syndrome. Rarer mimicking conditions are pheochromocytoma, systemic capillary leak syndrome, Shoshin syndrome, due to acute beriberi cardiomyopathy, acute adrenal insufficiency, crisis, hyperinflammatory syndromes like Ms. A, new onset of severe hypothyroidism. FM patients often need enotropic agents or temporary mechanical circulatory support, TMCS, even though no trials validate their use. 
The main objective is to provide sufficient circulatory support before performing an endomyocardial biopsy. Temporary devices like IABP, VAECMO, or microaxial flow pumps can enhance hemodynamics since myocarditis is typically reversible. The choice of enotropic agents varies by center. Dobutamine is the most used, 58.7%, followed by epinephrine, 43%, and norepinephrine, 41.2%. It's advised not to use very high doses of inotropes but to prefer early TMCS use. FM patients should be directed to specialized tertiary centers with expertise in TMCS, heart transplant, and endomyocardial biopsy. If TMCS weaning isn't possible after two to three weeks, considering LVAD or urgent transplant is advised. Heart failure medications should be started when clinically feasible to support myocardial recovery. Heart transplantation is often the preferred choice due to the involvement of both ventricles. The long-term outcome for patients who undergo heart transplantation due to myocarditis is comparable to those with other etiologies. Endomyocardial biopsy, that is EMB, is recommended by guidelines and experts for diagnosing myocarditis. Despite its recommendation, EMB is often not performed in cases of cardiogenic shock or suspected myocarditis. The diagnostic accuracy of EMB can vary based on the etiology and biopsy site. EMB's diagnostic yield for determining the cause of acute heart failure in patients on VAECMO ranges from 39% to 78%. Right-sided EMB is typically preferred, with 68-91% to of patients undergoing this procedure based on two registries. For patients on VAECMO, a combined fluoroscopic and echocardiographic guided RV-sided EMB is favored with the septum being the preferred sampling site to minimize complications. EMB can confirm myocarditis diagnosis, evaluate the extent of inflammation, and identify specific histological types, which can influence prognosis and treatment. Giant cell myocarditis, GCM, has a worse prognosis compared to other types. Detecting the myocardial viral genome is advised, but its clinical significance is debated. Common complications of EMB include pericardial effusion, third-degree atrioventricular block, and cardiac arrest. The overall procedural complication rate is around 1% in specialized centers, but it might be higher in patients on VAECMO. EMB is valuable in FM management but should be conducted by skilled practitioners. For patients with giant cell myocarditis, immunosuppression is essential. This includes blocking the T-cell response using agents like antithymocyte globulin and cyclosporin, combined with high-dose intravenous corticosteroids. Patients with an eosinophilic cause can benefit from pulsed intravenous corticosteroids, specifically 1 gram methylprednisolone. High-dose steroids and other strong immunosuppressive drugs are also treatment options for myocarditis induced by immune checkpoint inhibitors, ICI. Depending on the etiology of FM, Specific treatments beyond corticosteroids are recommended, such as for eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis and toxicuriasis. Cardiac sarcoidosis, which can occasionally manifest as FM, is typically treated with corticosteroid therapy. The use of immunosuppression for lymphocytic myocarditis, LM, that isn't a result of ICI or systemic autoimmune disorders remains a topic of debate. The MITS trial, NCT 0515074, is an international single-blinded study that will evaluate the effectiveness of 1 gram methylprednisolone given for three days in high-risk patients with idiopathic acute LM complicated by acute heart failure. This includes FM patients needing temporary mechanical circulatory support. For better outcomes in suspected FM patients, early identification and referral to specialized tertiary centers are crucial. These centers should offer prompt TMCS, have the ability to perform EMB when needed, and possess specialized knowledge in myocarditis. Corticosteroid therapy should be considered to prevent permanent myocardial damage, along with other disease-specific treatments. The recommendations can be encapsulated with the acronym R2ABC. Recognition refer aggressive circulatory support biopsy as soon as possible consider corticosteroids. Refer to this algorithm for more details.